something on your mind again? Let's work through it together. Two heads are better than one. What have you two been up to? <laughs> Seems like you've been enjoying yourselves. How about you? What are you up to now? I'm just looking out for some weeds while getting some fresh air. I noticed that I have some blurry memories after saving Ermin's soul. I almost feel like there's still something extremely important I need to do. But I can't remember what it is. Hmm? Why is that? Don't worry, we'll help you remember! Thank you so much. Since you're willing to help, I have something I'd like to show you. It's filled with some kind of power. Mm-hmm. I found it in the Sanctuary of Suristana, but I have no recollection of it whatsoever. It's filled with pure elemental power that is quite similar to mine, but yet it's also a little different. It's very likely that it's connected to my foggy memory, but I can't figure out what it is. Traveler, do you have any ideas? Hmm... You know, Nahida, we just happen to be going on an adventure right now. If we find anything, we'll be sure to let you know right away! Thanks, you two. I didn't mean to trouble you again. Don't mention it! Besides, it seems you've got a lot on your mind and we'd like to help! <laughs> Hey, get out! You shouldn't be around here! I'm sorry, Lesser Lord Kusanali. Fungi don't usually come near this place. Last warning! Get out before I kick you out, you hear? Hang on. I think it's trying to tell us something. But, Great Dendro Archon, it's a monster! Please, don't worry. <laughs> Hmm, I think I understand. Seems that it wants us to follow it. You can understand it? Mm-hmm. Even though different creatures have varying habits and ways of communicating, the emotions we experience are all the same. I can feel its anxiety and fear. It's in dire need of our help. Well, fungi are kind of cute, but... That's true. Okay, let's go take a look. All right, lead the way, little fungus. Although they all look about the same, some fungi are friendly, while others are super aggressive and attack anyone they see. It can't be helped. Perhaps in their eyes, humans are like fierce monsters as well. After all, they can't distinguish which human behaviors are hostile or not, and it'd already be too late for them once humans have drawn their weapons. Hence why they tend to strike first, rather than waiting. That's not too different from how humans think sometimes. That's what I meant by shared emotions. Hmm, it seems to be anxious. Let's follow it and see where it leads. strange about this fungus. It seems to be anxious and afraid. It appears it was in a hurry because of this unconscious fungus. Hmm. Seems 
like they might be family. So maybe this fungus wanted to bring Nahida here to help its family member. Probably. Although fungi are simple creatures, they're very sensitive to elemental power. Maybe it noticed me on my way back and thought I'd be able to help. I'll take a look. I should be able to help if it's just a common illness. Hmm? What is it, Nahida? Strange. Very strange. This fungus didn't develop from a spore. It's an elemental life form. Huh? An elemental life form? Yes. Although the fungi you normally see are capable of using elemental powers, they're merely borrowing elemental power from nature around them. As for this fungus, it has elemental power flowing through it. Definitely not anything like your typical fungus. Exactly. This is very interesting. I've never seen anything like it. So this is a first even for Nahida. But that's not all. There's a large void within its elemental power. The void is stopping the elemental power from flowing normally, which must be why it fainted. So do you think it'll wake up if we can fill the void? Yes, and I just so happen to be good at this sort of thing. I'll see what I can do right away. Like everything is fine now. Lord of Tendro? Is it really the Lord of Tendro? Oh, I can't believe the Lord of Tendro saved me. Thank you, as well as the stranger and creature next to you. Ah! It can talk? Oh, I didn't expect such a strange creature to make a sound like that. Seems I'm just as shocked as you are. What? Paimon can talk. Uh, Paimon isn't a strange creature. Paimon's just... Uh, Paimon! Hello, Paimon. I'm not yet able to evaluate an organism's intelligence from its appearance. I will only know you are able to speak once you have spoken. Oh, uh, well, no need to take it seriously. It's no big deal. But does Paimon really look so dumb that people might think Paimon doesn't know how to talk? You must understand, Paimon. A mouth is used for eating, breathing, and other functions that are more important than speaking. So a creature may not speak, even if it has a mouth. I've never seen a creature like you before, so I dared not make the assumption that you could speak. Even if you do possess a number of human traits, it is still very common for creatures to have similar external forms but completely different interiors, just like fungi and slimes. Did this fungus study at the academia? It seems even more talkative than Paimon! You're not a fungus, are you? That's correct. This might be surprising to you, and I'm sure that you must have questions. Let's find somewhere else to talk. It might startle my fellow family members if I speak too much using this strange voice. Me, 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 me. It says that it's very thankful for your help. I was confident that I knew of all the creatures into that. Even if there are ones I've never seen with my own eyes, I thought I possessed all the relevant knowledge about them. However, even if I were to lay out the traits of all elemental life forms, you don't seem to match any of them. What are you? And where did you come from? I come from an ancient race. We have existed for a very long time, possibly longer than any records in existence. My home was filled with flowing water and great mountains. Lush grass covered the land, and my family and I lived in bliss and happiness. Until the apocalypse came, 
and changed my home forever. A horrifying power consumed all there was. The seeds of catastrophe nested and grew inside of us, twisting and warping us, causing us to lose control. We were victims of the apocalypse, yet in time, we also became the apocalypse itself. The apocalypse? I'm not sure what it means either. It sounds like some kind of old fable. It's a long and complicated story. It will take me some time to explain it clearly. Don't worry, we'll listen. Please continue. I was lucky and managed to survive. Afterward, I left with some of my family and came to Sumeru to search for a way to rescue my homeland. We came in contact with many species and learned from their cultures and knowledge, hoping to understand the truth behind the apocalypse. We later found out that humans know the power of the apocalypse and refer to it as forbidden knowledge. Your home was destroyed by forbidden knowledge? Does that mean you're from the desert? It's said that they are looking for a way to save their homeland, but the catastrophe of the desert should have ended a long time ago. The Lord of Dendro is correct. We are not from the desert. I would very much like to tell you the location of my homeland, but unfortunately, I've forgotten. That may sound a little odd, as it is very important to both me and my family. Yes, how could you forget? I am a life form that was contaminated by the apocalypse. A part of my knowledge and memory was taken away as the contamination inside of me was purged. Ah, I get it now. So the void of elemental power was left behind from when the forbidden knowledge was purged. I'm sorry. I hadn't considered that kind of possibility. That's okay. Lord of Dendro, there is no need to apologize. Without your help, I would have lost more than just my knowledge and memory. And not only did you save me, but you've also already rid the world of the remaining forbidden knowledge, right? That's right. The forbidden knowledge is no more, and your homeland should be safe now. My home... should be safe now. We can go home. For the longest time, this moment has only seemed like a dream. I never knew it would become a reality so quickly. I was unable to fulfill our calling. I never found a way to save my homeland. And I have even forgotten where it is. It's not your fault. You've already done everything you can. Every species paid a grave price in the fight against forbidden knowledge. This is not a responsibility you should carry on your own. You mentioned that there were other survivors besides yourself. Where are they? Maybe they'll remember. The apocalypse put us through immense pain. Many of my family members have already met their end. I'm not sure who else is still alive. Don't worry, I should be able to find them. Just leave it to me. I'll leave the rainforest to the Aranara. And as for the city, there are a few nice kids that should be willing to help. Oh yeah, they'll give us a hand. Give me a moment. I'll contact them right now. That should do it. It may take some time to find them, so let's wait for a bit. Thank you, Lord of Dendro. We all believe that you will keep your promises. The moment I saw you when I awoke, I had a feeling you were here because of the agreement. Hmm? Agreement? You might not remember, but this is a prophecy that we deeply believe in. That the Lord of Dendro will bring us home once the catastrophe comes to an end. Ah, oh, I see. I... I'm sorry. There are also some blurry segments in my memory as well. But I'm very concerned about your homeland. 
this is something I should help with. It's really no trouble to me at all. Would you all be willing to come with me somewhere as we wait? The more family members that can return home with me, the better. But didn't you say that you don't know where they are? Yes, but I know their end. I will explain it to you along the way. There's something that I'm very concerned about. Yes. I didn't mention it just now, but do you remember when I told you that the power in the crystal is very similar to mine, yet also different? The elemental power inside the crystal is completely identical to that of the fungus. What? Exactly. The prophecy that it mentioned was probably an agreement that I made with an elemental life form that once represented its race. I had to deal with the forbidden knowledge to save their homeland. The process, however, took away some of my memories. That sequence of events would explain the persistent feeling that I had unfinished business. Makes sense. Too bad it's unable to tell us more. Yeah. I've been trying to think of a place that fits the description of its homeland, but I'm unable to come up with anything. Agreed. I really want to send them home, so they won't have to wander around anymore. No matter how long, the road here is a little rough. I'll lead the way. Don't worry! Paimon can handle any road! Ah! Enemies! You're up, Traveler! No matter how long it's been, it still looks like it had suddenly frozen in place. My burial decree! Go, go, go! Yeah! You want to... Go! Amazing. With such skills, you all would have definitely been able to find a way to survive the apocalypse. Uh, hey! Paimon has been meaning to ask. You all didn't originally look like this, did you? No, we didn't. The appearance of our kind will change according to the environment. After communicating with various living organisms in Sumeru, we discovered that fungi are the life form most adapted to live in these lands. Thus, we gradually took the form of fungi and became a part of their group. It's hard to believe that's even possible! The most important instinct any life form possesses is adapting to the environment. I don't think that should surprise you, Paimon. Your hand is shaped like that for a reason so you are able to grip and use tools more easily. The reason why fungi absorb elemental power is to blend with the environment and fend off natural predators. We are Dendro life forms, one of the most ancient life forms in this land. That is why we are so adaptable. So you mean, if Paimon wanted to, Paimon could change into a different form as well? Not as freely, I'm afraid. You would require a long time to make that happen. Although this is common sense to us, it is still extremely difficult to explain. Mm. Putting it as simply as possible, changing form requires energy, and energy comes with time. You cannot make a sprout grow into a giant tree instantly, nor can you force a tree to bear fruit overnight. I see. Humans have a term for this. It's called growth. Ah, you're so smart, Nahida! Paimon gets it now! Growth? I see. Yes, then this is what you would call growth. A most beautiful word. I shall enjoy it more as we walk. We're about half.
halfway there. You're doing great, Paimon. Do you need me to carry you on my back? Huh? Oh, no! Paimon was just curious! Paimon isn't that tired. <laughs> he seems to enjoy taking care of others. You think so? Does the Lord of Dendro need to be carried? Uh, that would be awkward, wouldn't it? Why don't you fly up and sit on top of my head? We can figure out who will carry who later! We have monsters here! Hmm, I think we may have a different understanding of carrying someone. No matter whether it's tired or not, my child is always happy when I put it on my back and give it a ride. Child? You mean the fungi we ran into earlier? Yes. One was my friend, and the other was my child. Why can't your kid speak? Because it's just a fungus. I don't want my presence to change or affect the original state of the fungi species here. However... It is slightly different from an ordinary fungus. It seems to understand some human language, so I gave it a name. Oh, then it must be a really cute name. You know, like Bongo Head. Hmm, you have an odd taste for names. Huh? Paimon thinks that name is great! Strange and cute at the same time. It's a name only Paimon would be able to come up with. <laughs> That's right! The name I came up with was not as creative as Paimon's. I learned it from an adventurer. It's... Its name is... I'm sorry, but I've forgotten. Uh, seems like I've forgotten many important things. Yes, I must remember it before I return. It's just as important as my homeland. Yes, this way. We're almost there. Humans also call it that before. It's the last form we take when we are at the end of our life. I... Uh, Paimon doesn't understand. It's trying to say that when they've suffered enough and reached the end of their life, they become a tumor of the withering. Yes. I would have also suffered the same fate if it wasn't for the Lord of Dendro's help. So... This is how the withering is formed? Previous research has revealed that forbidden knowledge is the root cause of the withering. But even if forbidden knowledge has been completely removed, its influence still remains, which is why the withering remains even after forbidden knowledge has disappeared. They've been tormented by forbidden knowledge for a long time. It's understandable that they will eventually become the withering. But what a sad and pitiful end. When I left my homeland, flowers like these filled the fields. Each bloom represented an individual life. They grew in the pristine lakes, in the fertile soil, in my home, and in the homes of my friends. They grew everywhere, until the world suddenly lost all its color and became tainted and murky. But it's all right. Our life essence, elemental power, still resides in this flower. After an adventurer clears the withering, I will quietly draw near the area. If I can sense the elemental power of my companions, then I take them with me. But that would mean the effects of forbidden knowledge could have... It's okay. That's not important anymore. I just hope that they can all make it back home. It's not right to leave them to simply perish in the open like this. Now that we finally have the chance to return home, 
Each one I manage to bring back will make me that much happier. I understand. Just leave it to us. So you're worried about me? <laughs> it's fine. Forbidden knowledge doesn't exist anymore. It's natural to want to be overcautious when dealing with a highly venomous snake, but when all that's left is its skeleton, there's nothing to worry about. Uh, Paimon doesn't get what you two are talking about, but we're all ready to go now, right? Then let's do this! We've dealt with the Withering countless times already! Stabilize! Solidify! Shadows of fate! Yeah! wasn't able to make it to the end. If only it could have held on just a little longer. I hope that you will be free of this pain after returning home. Just thinking about how many elemental life forms have turned into tumors of the withering makes Paimon sad. It's okay. As long as elemental power still exists, then we will still be around. An external form is but a gift of time. Through growth comes change, and even abandonment of previous forms. However, our true nature is not so easily affected. It wouldn't have come to this if we were able to cure them earlier. But I will cure all of them. Even if it's just for the sake of the rainforest and all the life forms that live in it. Thank you, Lord of Dendro. It was a wise choice for us to place our trust in you and wait. Hold on. I think I got something. Ah, oh, I see. Okay, I understand. Thank you so much. So, they found a fungus that matches the description I gave them. It's currently unconscious. It must be in a similar situation as I was. We should hurry and go take a look. Okay, follow me. Unsolicited. And all the more valuable for it. <laughs> We're close now. It's just a little further inside. But there are so many fungi here. They're probably all ordinary fungi, right? Yeah, they won't be happy to see us. No fighting. These are all its family. Although we belong to different species, we've spent a long time living among the fungi. They are very important to us. They can be reasonable, as long as we try to communicate. What should we do? You're the only one who can make it through, right? But you'll need Nahida's power if you want to save that fungus. I've got an idea. Can you teach me how to change into a fungus? You want to transform into a fungus? But we don't have time for growth. 
Nahida is a god. Changing into a fungus should be a piece of cake for her. Even gods can't bend the laws of time so easily. Then we'll have to enter with the risk of being noticed. We may not be able to avoid a fight. But if spending some of my power will guarantee the safety of you and its family, then I'm willing to try. Alright. You have great elemental power, so you may be able to do it. You will have to use power equal to that which is required to break through the limitations of time. I will lend you the relevant knowledge that I have. It should make your transformation process a little easier. Alright, I'm ready. Changing into a fungus should be quite an interesting experience. Lord of Dendro, this is nothing to joke about. I am extremely serious about this. Hmm? As am I. I'm not joking at all. Alright, alright! Let's not get hung up here. If it's really possible to turn into a fungus, then... Why don't we give it a try now? Okay. Good luck, Lord of Dendro. Wow! You really turned into a fungus! It's actually not too bad. My perspective in this form isn't much different from usual. The unconscious fungus is just below here. Can you all help me determine which one it is? Oh, how do we do that? I'll get close to them while you make your way over from above. You should be able to identify them using elemental sight since they're elemental life forms. Then, all you have to do is repeat the correct answer in your mind. As long as I'm able to see you, then I'll be able to hear your answer. Okay! Let me lure away the fungi up top and make way for you. Alright, good luck, Nahida. Let's go, Traveler. There's a fungus on patrol in the center there. It looks pretty vigilant, so I'd better go around it. Nana! Nana! won't be moving for the moment. I should hurry and make my way through. This is the spot. There are several fungi here. I'll hide and wait for the traveler to catch up. change forms like that. I even used the techniques that it taught me. Seems like its warnings were not unfounded. The power of time accumulates slowly and goes unnoticed. A great price is to be paid if you wish to perform drastic changes instantly. Thank you for everything you've done. All seems to have gone according to plan. 
Now, we simply wait for it to wake up. <sighs> Who are you? I apologize. Language is not easy. Need long time. It's okay, I have good news. Let me explain it to you the fungi way. Ended? Go home now? Yes. Unfortunately, I've forgotten where home is. I was hoping you still remembered. I remember. Really? That's great! Home, Dendro Dragon. Dendro Dragon. Ah, yes! The Dendro Dragon! I'm sorry, I just got so excited. I've probably never expressed such emotions before. But yes, our home is the Dendro Dragon. Oh, wait a minute. Paimon's confused. Do you mean the Dendro Dragon as in an elemental dragon? Like Dvalin? Yes, they're both dragons, but at Pep, the Dendro Dragon has been around for longer and has accumulated dense elemental power. But I don't quite understand. Why would you say that your homeland is a dragon? Because we live inside the Dendro Dragon. Uh, uh... The Dendro Dragon. Inside. Very big. Mountains. Water. Trees. Us. There is an entire world inside the Dendro Dragon's body. The Dendro Dragon nurtured the earliest life forms and protected us inside of itself. It once told us in a majestic voice that once we finally matured, we'd be able to start life in a new world. However, that day never came. Our homeland was the greatest place there ever was before the apocalypse arrived. I'm still confused. Yes, a very good example. It appears that you're much smarter than Paimon. The only difference is that the Dendro Dragon is much, much larger than any Dendro Slime. Wait, then if that's the case, doesn't that imply that a pep has also been contaminated by forbidden knowledge? Yes, that is correct. What has suddenly made you look so worried, Lord of Dendro? I haven't seen this expression on you before. A pep is the most adaptable life form in the world. The forbidden knowledge should have become a part of its body a long time ago. Which means that if all the forbidden knowledge has been eliminated, then a big void will also form inside the dragon! I'm afraid so. Its body and soul have probably been in terrible shape for some time now. No wonder I haven't seen a pep for so long. But how did it get contaminated? Was it due to the destruction of King Deshret's civilization? Hmm. But anyway, a pep disappeared and has been gone ever since that time. It's been enduring unimaginable pain all the while. It's probably in pain as we speak. Yes! How could I have forgotten? If the Dendro Dragon fails to hang on, the elemental power inside it will no longer be able to maintain its form, and will all be dispersed. Dendro elemental power of that concentration will cause the rainforest to overgrow. Giant trees will completely block out the sun. Plants and humans will fight over oxygen. Sumeria will no longer be suitable for sustaining life. Hey, what about the crystal? Why don't you show it to them and see if they know anything about it? <sighs> yes, I'm sorry. You're right. We don't have time to panic. Have you two ever seen anything like this before? No. Its power feels very familiar. Like something from our homeland, but I don't know what it is. I'm sorry our memories aren't very reliable. 
It's okay. I'll contact my helpers just as I did before and see if they can locate your other family members. I'm counting on you all. Your info is crucial to us now. Let's wait for their reply again. Though I know waiting can feel unbearable at a time like this. Explain to them that you aren't hostile. After seeing you save it, its family is very grateful to you. Go home, thief. Heart decision. Don't know. They are weak. I worry. If waiting, then I hope. Don't worry. I understand what you are trying to say. Family is very important to us, no matter when we were actually family. It has done a lot to protect this territory and can't help but worry now that it's about to leave. Can you do one last thing for it while we wait? Of course. I can relate to how it's feeling. I need to organize my thoughts as well. Thank you. Thank you. Tend. Soil. Food. Don't like plants. There are two things that it wants you to do. One is to look after the land that the food is grown in, and the other is to drive away the plants that are trying to invade the area. Soil! There! First! Seed! Here! Hyman understood that! No need to translate! We'll take care of it right away! Thank you so much for your willingness to help. In the meantime, I'd like to tell it the things we experienced on the way here. Sharing knowledge is a habit of ours. Everyone hold hands! Stabilize! There's too much we can do until we receive some new leads. Can you tell us about the Dendro Dragon? We don't know anything about it. Who is it? And what does it have to do with King Deshret? Well, the history of dragons starts from the very beginning of Tevat. Sumeru was a Pep's territory. In those days, the lush rainforest covered the entire nation. Oh, so there was no desert back then? Not at first. That came when a giant spike fell from the sky, turning a huge section of the rainforest into sand. In an attempt to adapt to its new environment, a pep changed color from the emerald green of the forest to the yellow of the sand. No wonder those two elemental life forms are always talking about the importance of adapting. A pep has always seen itself as the master of Sumeru, 
and has refused to recognize the new order that was established. Even now, it probably still holds great hostility toward the gods. However, powerless against the power in the sky, and then the forbidden knowledge many millennia later, it's been unable to stir up any trouble. Conflicts between the two sides are destined to continue until a balance can be found. As far as I know, a pep had been slumbering in the desert, and King Deshret had taken a great interest in it. Maybe this is why a pep was contaminated. I'm not sure what may have led it to become involved, but rescuing it is definitely our top priority right now. The crystal that I have in my possession is probably the key that links the two matters together. appears to be encouraging itself. Is it about to face some kind of formidable foe? The prophecy. Thank you, Lord of Tendril. Family happy. You really like them, don't you? Family like. Do you not like your family? I. Uh, that's not what Paima meant. It's just that you guys aren't actually the same species. Does that matter? Family likes me. I like family. I. Paimon doesn't quite understand. What it's trying to say is that as long as family members get along well, then nothing else matters. You place importance on appearances, but we do not. We find the experiences, knowledge, and connections we've made to be more important. These are all things that are more reliable than mere external appearances. These are the fruits of time, and the essence of what it means to grow. Oh, Paimon gets it now! Looks can always change, so what's inside of us is more important. It wouldn't matter. Paima would still be able to recognize you right away. Oh? Hmm. Understood. Thank you. Still nothing new from the forest. Seems like we won't be able to find your other family members for now. <sighs> it appears we are out of leads to follow. And if no one knows how this crystal works, then a pet may be in danger. <sighs> Sorry. It's okay, it isn't your fault. I don't think it's a coincidence that neither of you can remember anything about the crystal. Maybe it's because the crystal has a very close connection to forbidden knowledge, which causes memories of it to be unclear. And if that's the case, finding the other fun guy still wouldn't help us at all. Hmm. The crystal and the apocalypse. The apocalypse and memories. Lord of Dendro... Do you still remember the prophecy? Mm-hmm, I do. What about it? The prophecy is a story that connects events of the past and the future. A family member once said that the apocalypse is a part of us, and that there is value in preserving it. The rest of the family did not approve of its opinion at the time, so it left. Preserving the apocalypse? Do you mean that there's still some that hasn't been eliminated? That's not very likely. The power of Ermin's soul covers every inch of the land. Did the prophecy say where that family member went? To the limitless depths east of Sumeru. A murky place that no one can return from. Yeah, that must be the chasm, right? But what is it doing there? Hmm. It's impossible to preserve forbidden knowledge, but... What if it can be converted to a different form? I'm sorry if I'm suddenly not making any sense. However, I do think it's possible. Follow me. I'll explain it once we find that elemental life form. Elemental 
the life form came all the way here on its own and spent a long time by itself? Wouldn't it already have become the withering like the others? There is a chance that it could avoid that end using the power of something here. I'm referring to what was used to fight against the Abyss. It once repaired the rifts of Tavat long ago. It has the ability to purify and stabilize powers that shouldn't exist in Tavat. Forbidden knowledge that its light has shown upon is kept here forever in a different form. Yep. It's just like soap bubbles that rise to the water surface. <sighs> Another strange metaphor. But Paimon somehow gets this one. What the Lord of Dendro means is that the apocalypse was altered by the power of the giant spike and hidden within the oozing filth. Yes, and it shouldn't be far from here. Let's go and take a look. Look! It's over there! Looks like we'll have to clear out the oozing filth in this area. You two should be able to take care of it, right? Yep! We know what to do! I'll just use the Lumen Stone on the Oozing Foundation! Oh, we finally managed to rescue it! It should be the life form from the prophecy. stable than that of the apocalypse, it is still a form of dangerous power. It might have lost its mind after being soaked in it for such a long time. Oh no! But we still have tons of questions we need to ask! I should be able to purge it with my elemental power. But this is our only chance. Traveler! It's okay. I trust your judgment. I was being a little hasty myself. Let's see if we can think of another way. Oh, yeah! You said that the elemental power in the crystal was identical to theirs! You want to use its power, but... The Lord of Dendro seems hesitant. I too would advise caution. It's risky to use its power without fully understanding its intended use. Don't understand! This no good, that no good, sad life, fortunes! Yes, I understand, but this is our only chance to return home. We cannot afford to be careless. It's okay, there's no need to argue. I'll think of something to do about the elemental power that will be used. Hmm... How about this? Traveler, you could try using it. I understand that you have an amazing resistance to forbidden knowledge. Don't overdo it, Traveler. My mom will be worried. And you others. How long? How long have I been waiting here? Yay! Looks like it worked! Lord of Dendro, here in person. Does that mean the apocalypse has come to an end? Wait, did you get smaller again? I'm sorry. That portion of my memory is highly unreliable at the moment. I can't seem to remember who you are. Hmm, that sounds about right. After all, the purpose of my existence is precisely for those unreliable memories you speak of. 
You once said that the apocalypse will be completely eradicated, and that relevant memories will become unstable. Even you couldn't promise that you'd remember our agreement after those events take place. However, you are definitely someone who stays true to your word. My sacrifice is nothing compared to your resolve. You and I made the agreement? Yes. You used your power to protect me. That is the reason why I was able to survive here. To be honest, I'm nearing my end. I had thought I'd be stronger than this. No one can withstand the power of the Apocalypse. In order to preserve a somewhat stable memory, I had to change the power of the Apocalypse into a different form. Only the giant spike that fell from the sky was capable of doing something like that. But the moment I chose to go through with it, is the moment I lost my chance of being rescued by the Lord of Dendro. But enough about me. Lord of Dendro, let's get to the important matter at hand. As you can see, I won't last much longer. I understand, and I'm sorry, but can you please tell me what this is? This is a fire seed. It's an essential item for saving the Dendro Dragon. Thankfully, it appears to be in good condition. The Lord of Dendro and our people created this item together. It mimics how the Dendro Dragon's Heart of Oasis operates. The Dendro Dragon has been tormented by the Apocalypse for far too long. It too is nearing the end of its power. However, if you are able to reactivate its heart of oasis using the fire seed, then the Dendro Dragon will begin to recover. And as a result, our homeland will return to the way it once was. Oh, so the heart of oasis is a pep's source of power. No wonder the crystal was able to heal this fungus just now. That's what it's used for. What? You used the fire seed to save me? Mm-hmm. Why? What's wrong? That's... Uh, never mind. It's not your fault. You didn't know. The fire seed contains a high concentration of elemental power inside of it. It's very powerful yet fragile at the same time. It is not stable in its current form. To prevent any accidents, please don't use it again. Since I am its creator, I will take responsibility for it. I assure you there's no need to worry. Alright. Aside from being able to heal the Dendro Dragon, the Fire Seed can also resonate with the Heart of Oasis. In other words, you'll be able to find the Dendro Dragon by following the guidance of the Fire Seed. But you should hurry. There is little time to waste. What about you? Forget about me. You should hurry home now. Everyone is returning home, including you. As I told you, I've already lost my chance to be saved by the Lord of Dendro. Lord of Dendro, I thank you for coming to find me, and for being willing to save the Dendro Dragon. Our past has been saved, and our future has been ensured. It's enough for me, just knowing that they will return home. Hey! Wait! It turned into... oozing filth! Can you use the Lumen Stone once more? I can still feel its elemental power. Please, of all of us, it deserves the chance to return home the most. This is a small ball of light that it left behind. I can feel it. I can feel its knowledge and emotions. It has all returned to its original elemental form and is becoming one with the other family members. Do not be sad, my friends. 
Its wish has come true, and it's very happy right now. Because its external form doesn't matter, right? Yes, because our external form does not matter, and our home has been saved. There is nothing more important than being together with family. Let's go! Not much further. Follow me, we're close now. I can feel its power lingering and shifting around us. Sometimes it feels distant, but other times, it seems close. This is its way of warning us. It has already noticed our presence. Dragon. Prima knew it would be big, but not that big! Puny god, puny human, leave my domain. Frail life forms like you cannot survive in the endless sands of the desert. Apep, we're here to save you! I do not need saving, especially not by you, Brewer. You are no different from Amun. Both of you have only existed for a fraction of what you know as time. Yet you call yourselves lords of this land by leaning on the heaven's glow. You're better off paying attention to your path ahead, as you will fall where you've fallen before. I know that you hate both gods and humans, but you've grown too weak now. Can't you let go of your hatred, even for only a moment? Let go. For only a moment. Foolish boor. You will find no gratefulness from me, even if you heal me. You will only be reviving the dragon that will destroy Sumeru and the Seven Nations. No! You're ill, that's all! That I am. Time will bring death to all. It's unavoidable. Although I am gravely ill, my mind remains clear. I am different from the ancient dragons that came to terms with you. There's no need for this. There's no point in fighting. What we need is the truth. <laughs> the truth. The shackles that the God of Wisdom cannot escape from. I have paid dearly for the truth, and you shall do the same soon enough. Something's coming! Ah, what is that? Paimon's never seen death before! It's our family. Huh? They're your family too? But they don't look anything like fungi! External form not important! Inner nature say! The composition of their elemental power is identical to ours. In other words, they're residents of our homeland. Is this what they've become after experiencing the Apocalypse? This is also a form of adaptation, although a most gruesome and pitiful one. Many of our family members never made it out of the Dendro Dragon. They've gradually taken this form in order to survive the Apocalypse. Is there any way to avoid fighting them? Hey! Can you guys talk? We're here to rescue you! They've given it their all just to survive. Their 
are being drawn by the Fire Seed. Only its power can temporarily free them from their pain. All that remains are the instincts to survive and search for energy needed to do so. Everything else has been discarded in the process of adaptation. So this is the result of forbidden knowledge. Would our world become the same if forbidden knowledge was allowed to rampage across to that? Like fish struggling on land, unable to find a single puddle of fresh water in the entire world. Yes. But please, try to be gentle with them. They are not evil in nature. All they want to do is survive. Stabilize! Right now. Right here. The wind knows me. anymore. They want to go home. Yes, it was never their intention to leave the Dendro Dragon. Is there a way to make them revert to their elemental form? Years of torment is what turned them into their current state. Their external form has become their shackles. It seems only the Fire Seed or a Pep's Heart of Oasis can save them. But it'll be risky if we use the Fire Seed again. Correct. We cannot use the Fire Seed again. Everyone goes home. Not just us! Uh... This is becoming quite the dilemma. <sighs> Let me think for a second. <sighs> it's fine. Let's use the power of the Fire Seed. I can't bear leaving them in the desert like this. Don't worry, the decision is on me. I'll take responsibility for whatever happens. It won't require much elemental power. I'm just worried that it'll become unstable. But as long as I use my elemental power to stabilize it a little, it shouldn't be a problem. Thank you. Sorry. Stubborn. Thank you, Lord of Dendro. Returning home is the most important thing to you. I've come to understand that during our travels. I'm not doing this just to protect you, but also because I hope to use you and your experience and try speaking to a pep again. After all, that giant Dendro dragon is also your family. Maybe it would listen. I will stand with you, Lord of Dendro. I will never forget your kindness. Yes! Yes! <sighs> Thank you. Alright, here it goes. Family. We will all be able to go home soon. amounts of knowledge and emotions are moving inside of me. They're all very excited. To imagine such growth could be achieved in such a short period of time. It's because you're carrying everyone's hopes and dreams! Yes, finally. We can go home. This is the last part. Let's go. This cave is huge! Could this be where the Dendro Dragon lives? Yeah, who knows what's inside that cave? Our goal is not only to find the dragon, but to also enter the world inside of it. That will be impossible if we can't get it to cooperate with us. But... How are we going to do that? It doesn't seem to want to help at all. I'll see what I can do. A pep, I know we don't see eye to eye and that we have a very different understanding of the world and its orders. However, we are both born of elemental power and both suffered the torment of forbidden knowledge. We are not that different. 
And right now, we share a common enemy. We should not let our differences get in the way. Hmm. Wonder if the Dendro Dragon's even willing to listen. I don't care about what you believe in, who you hate, or what you've done in the name of hatred. Nor do I expect you to be grateful. I'm here to save both you and your people. My people! They've been searching for a way to save you ever since they left their homeland. They yearn for a chance to return home. And now that everything is over, all the hatred that you harbor has lost its meaning. Rather than continuing to fight, you should consider the life you've produced. No response. Your eagerness to survive means that you haven't given up on that world yet. If you claim to know so much more than I, then why don't you truly think about why you want to survive? And why you're so vengeful? Send us to the homeland! Uh, um... Nahida, where are we? Huh? And what about the Traveler? Where'd he go? I was only able to ensure that we made it here safely. It's possible we arrived at different locations. Hmm... Well, then let's go have a look up ahead. Paimon's feeling really worried. Yep, let's go. I wouldn't worry too much. The Traveler's no pushover. Paimon knows that. It's just that Paimon isn't used to not having the Traveler around. Ugh. Let's hurry. He might be just up ahead. of Oasis. All we need to do is light it with the fire seed, and it'll restore a pep with elemental power. The damage it suffered internally will also slowly begin to heal. Then let's hurry and light it! We still need to find the Traveler! Alright, hang on. Uh. Wait! The fire seed! What happened? It shattered! It was even more unstable than I expected. But... why? We barely used it! I'm not sure. Perhaps the fire seed was only capable of protecting one person? But if I didn't use its power on everyone, there's no way of knowing where you could have been sucked into. And even if that's the case, there's no reason for it to simply shatter, uh, unless... Unless what? Unless I was already in a weakened state when I created this fire seed. Which would be when we at first saved the desert. Oh no. Wait, let's put that aside for a moment. If the fire seed has shattered, wouldn't that mean we came all this way for nothing? Oh, do you know what we should do now, Nahida? Oh, come on, Paimon, think! I... Uh, <sighs> Don't worry, Paimon. This is my responsibility. The fire seed is technically just a ball of highly concentrated elemental power. Although my elemental power is slightly different than that of elemental life forms, I gained a better understanding of it when I turned into a fungus. So, all I have to do is imitate that power while adding some of my own, and I'll be able to do what the fire seed was supposed to. You're Gonna become the Fire Seed? Yes. It'll take a lot of power from me, but it still won't be anything compared to when I was in the desert. I might, however, become even smaller. What happens if you keep getting smaller? I'll become a blade of grass or a twig. Basically, I'll return to how I was first born. 
I will be able to unleash power beyond my limits if I can reverse the process of growth. But you'll lose everything. You'll not only lose your appearance, but you'll lose your emotions, memories, and who knows what else? That's all right. None of that matters compared to the dangers that the Pep is facing right now. No, no, wait! There has to be another way. Besides, what will Sumeru do if you turn into a twig? Maybe you and the Traveler can plant me in the soil of Sumeru once it is all over. I can still communicate with the world through the forest. It's just that you won't be able to see me for some time. You can't be serious. If the Traveler were here, he definitely wouldn't let you go through with it. If we knew this was how you were going to take responsibility, then we never would have agreed in the first place. I'm sorry, Paimon, but we're out of options. Not all eagles who have fallen to the ground can soar in the sky once again. But if no risks are taken, then the eagle will be grounded forever. No. Please, no, Nahida! Uh, uh, uh. Huh? Uh. I know. A sacrifice must be made, huh? but not by the Lord of Dendro. <sighs> We've all grown on this long journey. If the purpose of that growth was to return home, then our wishes have come true. Would you lend us your power? would come to this. All the knowledge, language, and emotions that you have learned will be reverted into pure elemental energy. In your new homeland, nothing of who you were will remain. You won't be remembered by anyone. Is that truly the return you've always dreamed of? Lord of Dendro, don't be sad. This is not your home. We go home. Lord of Dentro should also go home. Hearest, <sighs> please. Feel our heartfelt desires. Awaken! Solidify! Wind Strider! 
Their knowledge, memories, and emotions have been reverted to elemental power and released. They are no longer able to respond to you. The guardians that have accompanied me for countless eras have also transformed into my elemental power, just as they did. They will be born once again now that they're one. There's nothing to be sad about. Paimon, we will never understand it, and it will never understand us. That's how it's destined to be. But as long as you can be healthy again, then nothing else matters to me, Apep. Samara will be free from threat as long as your health is maintained. I thought that my rage would be kindled once my power returned to me. However, what I feel now is a feeling that has long eluded me. The feeling of peace. The forbidden knowledge influenced you ever since you were contaminated, greatly amplifying your hatred and rage. Yes, there's no denying that. Although my hatred for that usurper from beyond the heavens still stirs deep within me, destroying you and your people serves me no purpose. Be that as it may, my position still stands, and I will have nothing to do with you. When you inevitably perish due to your ever-expanding curiosity, I will still sneer and mock you in my heart. Sheesh! Who can put up with you? I respect your decision, and with time, I will prove to you that we will not repeat our mistakes. Before you begin resting, there is one last thing I would like to know. How did you become affected by forbidden knowledge? It's a long story. We all once believed in the distant past that only forbidden knowledge could give us enough power to defeat the heavenly principles. The Dragon King acquired the power of darkness from outside of this world and led us in a fight against the order established by the Outsiders. D dragon King? An unimaginable war took place into that, causing destruction on an unprecedented scale. The world itself was on the verge of collapse. In war, the victor would inherit the right to shape the world, while the losers must turn into ash. But I didn't give up on searching for a way to turn the tides, even after the death of the Dragon King. As I attempted to collect more forbidden knowledge from the corners of the world, as it was on the verge of collapse, I was stopped by the giant spike that fell from the sky. Sand dunes arose where there was only forest, and it was as if even Sumeru itself was trying to tell me that the era of the dragons was over. But you still didn't give up, did you? Because of Amun Alakhmar. Yes. 
Alakmar eventually obtained this power with the help of Nabu Malikata. His ambitions continued to grow, and he planned to establish a powerful kingdom in my domain. Although I didn't think much of him, I allowed his actions under one condition. The condition was that after his death, all the knowledge he came to accumulate would belong to me. At that time, I still harbored deep regrets. By the time the Dragon King finally returned, the world had irrevocably changed. Some of the dragons have grown close to your kind, and have forgotten all about our hatred from when the world was taken from us. And some died, leaving behind nothing but their bones. While others chose to flee after experiencing pain and agony. But for me, the scales and will of the Dragon King still shine bright in my heart, even to this day. I will follow it until the end of my time. You really are insane. When Alakmar's proud kingdom collapsed, I swallowed him whole as I agreed and absorbed his elemental power. However, what I gained was no benefit. No. I gained the apocalypse. I used up all my strength just trying to keep the pain under control. I had no energy to analyze the knowledge he had accumulated. But even then, I still believe that his insanity was far greater than that of my own. So that's how the apocalypse started. I admit that I fell for his trap. I was like a final failsafe in his plan. Tiny Boor, and the rest of you, continue forward. I shall keep a watchful eye. How far will the life so dear and precious to the Heavenly Principles be able to go? I wonder. Hey! Looks like we've been sent back out! Still in one piece, too! The dragon will need to rest for a very long time before it is fully healthy again. It's not as ruthless as it was before. Curing the dragon of its illness has seemingly made it more open to reason. Nobody's in a good mood when they're feeling sick. Even though we accomplished something really important, Paimon still doesn't feel happy for some reason. Indeed. Although they'll still have the chance to be born again, they've lost their memories of their journey and their feelings for their homeland. Each opportunity for growth is unique in its own way. Perhaps the immense power we released was the pouring out of all these irreplaceable emotions that had built up over time. Can you really call a place with no family your home? Family... Right! The Hydrofungus left behind its family! Those two fungi might be waiting for it to return. Oh yeah! Let's hurry and go take a look! Huh. How are we going to explain all the complicated things that happened? <laughs> They're still here! Have they really been waiting here all this time? <laughs> We're back. <sighs> I'm sorry. I really am. But it's gone home, and won't be able to return for a very long time. Don't be sad. It did it to protect you. Your happiness is more important to it than anything else in the world. It said that Noor is its most important family member. That's your name, isn't it? This is wonderful! 
so it has left traces of itself after all. They will definitely meet again, someday. Yeah. <laughs> 